All right, everybody, back with another video, um, another centipede video. And also, this one is not working, so hopefully it's a little bit more interesting than the last video I did. I have no idea because I haven't looked at it yet. But also in the mail recently, I received some no op, no operation adapters for um, signature analysis from Vector Collector on KLOV. And you can see there's a 6502, a Z80, um, 6809 for some Williams games, and an 8080 um, for old Midway stuff probably, um, or anything that used that CPU. So, since this board is not working, and in my previous video I'll link to it, um, I showed how you can use the video out and just 5 volts to get this on a video on a screen. I'm using black and white composite video there. And I figure what we'll do is just start from the beginning. We know power is good, obviously, because I have a known good power supply here. But uh, we do not know what the reset circuit looks like. We don't know if we have good clock or anything like that. So we'll st start from scratch. Um, this, this PCB is not doing anything, as far as I can tell, in test mode when it was in the cabinet in test mode. Um, or in non-test mode. So let me put this on Let's see. What am I gonna do first? I guess I'll put it on the tripod. Hopefully we can uh, take a look at the clock and and uh, Reset it. All right, that's powered on and I have my Oscilloscope on obviously I think you can see this somewhat decent get that out of the way um, no. Is that better? Yeah Okay, so this is the 6502, um, pin 40 is the reset line, and we know that that is low, and that means it's actually in reset. I have my frequency counter enabled, and if we go to, uh, this is also, the Atari Centipede board has um, pull-ups for the, or like, uh, not pull-ups, but um, test points for the clock signal. Um, so we can do it there, or we can do it at pin, I think, 37. And it's saying 4.5 megahertz, which is obviously bad. <laughs> I think I think these are only rated to run at 1 megahertz. I don't think that's right. So we're in reset, and I think our clock signal is bad. I might bring up the other centipede board just to look at it real quick and confirm. But I would expect that this clock signal is too high, 4.5 megahertz. This CPU is only rated up to like 3 megahertz. So I would suspect that the CPU, something's going on when the clock signal's jacked up. So let me come back to that. There are a couple um, clock signals because there's a, the input is here, this oh, phi sign, I guess, um, in zero, I think is what it's called. Um, that's the clock input. And then you have an output, which should match or be the inverse of it. Yeah, so anyway, something is not right there. All right, so I'm on, I took the camera off the, the scope. So they have, uh, all I did is I took my probe and looked at my 12 megahertz clock and you can see it's 12 and then I checked out the 6 megahertz clock there and it's 6 and I saw something flash on the screen and all of a sudden it was working I didn't even do anything except for probe a couple things what the what the heck and then I come back here look at my reset line and now it's high like it should be see that it's no longer in reset obviously the game's running and I look at my clock signal right here, and we have 1.5 megahertz. Um, and my clock there is also 1.5 megahertz. So I, all of a sudden the game's working. This thing was dead as a doornail. I had 4.5 megahertz on the on it, and then I just probed a couple of th things, and it magically starts working. I don't understand it. So. Let me see if we can get some color. I'll hook up the color here, and then maybe we'll put this board in. I might go ahead and reset these chips um, to test that, and then 
but now it's working. I can't the the use of using the no op no operation adapter. I might go ahead and do a, a signature analysis on just the 6502 to test that no op there. So I'll be right. All right. Back. For some reason, they removed R73, um, but if I hold my sink there, we do get. Let me see. We do get a good picture. And I know the colors don't look right through the camera, but they do look right right now. It's kind of a teal lettered background with pink with teal outline on the mushroom so everything it looks good i mean it's it's working i don't get it it wasn't working and now it is it's another one of those magic scenarios i guess all right i was i'm able to duplicate it again so let me see i'm going to check my clock here we have a 4.5 megahertz if i check it up here on my 12 megahertz, it's jumping all over the place. And the six megahertz is around 16 uh, megahertz. So something is not right with this clock circuit over here. So I'm going to, it seemed like it did work for a split second. I don't know, I'm gonna have to break out the schematic and see what's going on there. This is a 74504 or something. A tw it says it's a 12 megahertz clock. I don't know. So something's going on with the clock. And let me investigate. Okay, I've been poking around a little bit more. So um, I think I should be able to measure the the clock. It, there's a 5 volts is applied to R1 right here. And, um, and this R1 and R2 are both connected to this leg of the uh, crystal right here. And... I mean, I'm not, I don't know what I was getting before. I, I just think something's, something's jacked up with this crystal. I actually took out the CPU for right now, but I'm, I'm under, I have power, five volts, and I mean, I'm not even triggering on anything. My six megahertz now is really low. I just think that something's jacked up with this crystal. So I'm going to replace this crystal. I don't have any new ones, but um, I'm going to pull one off of a, a non-working battle zone board and see if that works. So I'm going to pull that crystal real quick. All right, doing this with you guys. Um, I put in another, there's actually a couple different holes here that you can um, put an oscill uh, crystal into. The bigger holes are this way, which is I use that crystal there. So let me power it on and actually see what we get on our scope. Now we're getting about 18 megahertz. Really weird, I don't even have a CPU in. And look what's on the screen. I'm actually getting some characters drawing on the screen without even a CPU. <laughs> that is, that's strange, I wasn't expecting that. Um, but if I look at my six megahertz clock, now we're good. So that crystal was jacked up. 12 megahertz on my 12 megahertz right here if you can see that hopefully that's that's good 12 megahertz is good six six megahertz is good and then i'm sure i'm down here with my clock right here 1.5 megahertz and nothing on the output so um the clock signal that's, that is output from the 6502. That's what this uh, phi, I think, symbol number two means. So this is the clock input, and this is the clock output from the 6502. So our input's 1.5 megahertz. So that should be the problem. Looks like we should be okay. Let me go ahead and put my um, CPU in. All right, I have my CPU in. I actually have a ZIF socket um, because I'm gonna do some signature analysis in this video. Um, but I went ahead and put in the ZIF socket um, into the CPU there. And let's power it on. All right, we're not, we're not home free yet. Getting some weird behavior there. It's probably in reset mode. Or maybe my CPU is not making contact. Oh, there we go. Doesn't like that ZIF socket. And that's what it is. 
Watch, if I press down on the zip socket, our game's running. So I guess this zip socket is not going to work out for me because as soon as I let it go, the game freezes. Okay, I'm filming out a sequence, but I wanted to come back and look at the clock on this other board that I had um, and kind of show a couple things. So let me go ahead and power it on here. You can see we have a working centipede board, and we're just going to measure our clock one more time here. Six, six megahertz test point shows six megahertz. 12 megahertz right there shows 12 megahertz, right? Okay. <clears throat> and then if I come down to my regular clock signal, we have our 1.5. And it's kind of cycling a little bit. But that's normal, I guess. I never knew if that was normal or not, but I guess um, that is somewhat normal to have some movement there on the frequency counter. I would thought it would be a little bit more stable, like this 6 megahertz right there is just rock solid, right? I mean, it's maybe because there's no load on it. I'm not sure. I just find this interesting, so I wanted to circle back and close out this part of the video. I mean, it doesn't budge at all on the 6 megahertz and 12 megahertz test points. It's rock solid. The other thing is, I think you can measure crystal... Um, with an oscilloscope or a frequency counter but there's load or inductance or something's happening with the with this probe that will will not give you accurate results um i i don't know enough about exactly how you're supposed to measure the crystal all by itself um but if i come there you can see i'm getting like 17 megahertz um as a frequency when I'm measuring the crystal like at that leg right there. Well now that's 18. 18 megahertz. 18 megahertz. Why is that any different? Whatever. Shouldn't be any different, should it? I don't know why those two are different. They, they're directly connected to each other. Weird. Okay, now that now I'm getting 17. But it also on this side of R1. But look what it does to my my screen. Whatever load or inductance that those leads are putting on the crystal, if I touch my lead to the um, the crystal, like right here, watch what happens on the screen. I mean, it totally flakes out. So I'm going to remove the CPU real quick and then um, show show it again. Okay, the CPU is removed. I just powered it up. Check our clock there. So with no CPU load, with the CPU not executing anything, we're rock solid at 1.51 megahertz. You can see it's not changing at all. So I think whatever the CPU is executing code or something, it must put some type of load or something that makes the, the clock move just a little bit. Um, this is news to me, so if somebody can explain that, that'd be great in the video, make a comment or something. But my 12 megahertz is rock solid, my 6 megahertz is rock solid, and if I come to R1, I'm getting 17.3 megahertz, and this is a 12 megahertz crystal, so I don't think this is an accurate way to measure this, I don't think. Um, but I'm at least documenting what I'm getting on a known working board. I'm going to come back and put the uh, the other board in here where I replaced the um, the crystal. Alright, I'll stay try to stay focused because I, I get distracted easy. This is the um, original board that I replaced the the um, crystal on and you can see it's working I have um, put I have put a different CPU in there but that's because I got sidetracked on something else but anyway let's measure our clock here right there 
we have 1.50 megahertz and it's moving a little bit that's our six megahertz right there and it is rock solid steady 12 megahertz and if I come to my crystal which is right there you can see it totally screws up and I lose all sync watch this no sync isn't that that's so with the CPU running obviously this whatever inductance this um, these probes are putting in there is whacked out so let me put pull the CPU and see if I get a better reading on just the crystal itself all right, so yeah, and with no CPU in, I um, I assume that whatever was left in the like in the RAM or something like that, that's what's being displayed on the screen. So I'm not as shocked now that I think about it that there's some stuff displayed on the screen because it's probably just whatever was left in RAM initially. So let me go ahead and measure this and see. I don't even get a trigger on this when I'm trying to measure this crystal here sorry I'm doing this by hand because it's probably the best way for me to kind of really zoom in and show stuff but I'm not even able to get a trigger on this thing I don't get it So I don't know if there is a great way to measure the crystal, to test the crystal itself with an oscilloscope, whether the CPU is in it or not. I mean, it definitely screws up your sink and stuff like that to the monitor. Um, interesting. Sorry for all the, the movement with my hand there. I don't get it. I got a good six, six megahertz there. I don't know exactly how to test crystals, so if somebody can tell me how to test a crystal, I would like to know how you can determine whether the crystals, because it could have been anything. I just started with the crystal for whatever reason, um, and it was kind of flaky for, I don't know why, it like worked and then it didn't work, and I was getting, um, what, like 16 megahertz on the 6 megahertz test point. I don't, I don't get it don't understand why it would be that far off. I mean, it could have been this transistor, could have been this 74 LSO4, I think. 74 SO4, it says. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But anyway, this board is working. Replace the crystal, and it seems to be, you know, rock solid. I put it in the game, and it works fine. One thing I noticed is, um, I'll have to do a different video, is... See, this board has R73 removed, which I think is part of the sync circuit. R72 and R73, maybe? I don't know. I have to dig into the schematics more, but I think R73 is definitely for the um, composite sync, or is tied to that. Um, or no, R72 is, and I've been using R73 because this side of R72 is connected to this side of R73. Um, but this one has it, one of them removed. And the sync is slightly different between this board and um, the other board that has both in there. I just noticed that um, when I put it in the game. The other thing is this board, the controllers work. You know, you, you uh, use the um, trackball to the right, it goes to the right. You use the trackball to the left, it goes to the left. The other board, it's opposite. And there's nothing different in the wiring of the cabinet, but this is something I'll have to do another video on, I guess, or something, or try to figure it out. Because this board, the trackball works correctly, and the other board, it's actually opposite. And I don't know why that is. I wonder if there's if that's a dip switch setting, maybe? I don't know. All right, that's it for this video. I just came back because I wanted to wrap this up. It's about 15 minutes long or so, so or 20. So until next time, guys, um, two centipedes working, and I have... Um, some no-op adapter stuff that I want to do in the next video, so I'll show that too. Cheers. Bye.